We start out a series of teaching this month titled Planning with God for the Year 2025. Planning with God for the Year 2025. Our scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 14, from verse 28 to 32. Luke 14. From verse 28 to 32, the Bible says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first, counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all but behold it began begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build, I was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, sit and not down first, and consulted whether he be able to 10,000 to meet him and promise to get him with 20,000. Story two, or else, while the other is yet a great way up, sooner an ambassador desired conditions of peace. This scripture we just read is a parable of our Lord Jesus Christ talking about the power or the essence of planning, strategic planning. And tonight, I want to teach on the topic, planning your way to success. Planning your way to success. See, success is not mystical. Success is deliberate. Success is not mystical. Success is spiritual. Success is not mystical. Success requires a deliberate effort from you and from me. If any man is to be successful in life, he or she must be positively engaged because nobody succeeds by doing nothing. Nobody succeeds by doing nothing. So for you to succeed, you must be a part of the process. Nobody becomes successful by accident. Any kind of accidental success ends up becoming a calamity. There is a story of two young men who were hired to do a job, and these two young men misbehaved on the job, and luckily or unluckily for them, that misbehavior went viral, and before we knew it, people began to show sympathy, even though these guys misbehaved, what were they doing? They were dancing on the job, you imagine people who have been put in charge of lives and properties, dancing away, creating dance videos while on duty. Well, as the uh, netizens, as they call them, citizens of the internet, netizens, right? I just taught you something new. The netizens, as they are called, began to show pity for these two young boys who were laid off for that kind of behavior on the job. And then one man of God took notice of the video and decided to send these kids abroad. Sent them from their home country to another country so that they can be successful. And uh, when these guys got there, that was when their troubles began. Long story cut short, the man could not afford to the bills or the scholarship of sending them abroad. He asked them to come back. And uh, these guys were not willing to come back. That created a lot of fiasco. Why did I share that story? I share that story because this young man did nothing to enjoy that level of success. And that is why they turned out to be a catastrophic failure. You cannot be absent in your success story. You have to be the main actor you have to even at least feature in your success story for your success to be long lasting. So no one succeeds by doing nothing. Now people can fail, in fact, people fail for doing nothing. 
In fact, the word poor is an acronym, P-O-O-R, poor, P-O-O-R. It stands for passing over opportunities repeatedly. Passing on or passing over opportunities repeatedly. That is, when the person is required, it is called poor, the person has been sitting and looking at opportunities come their way and passing it over for whatever reasons, for whatever reasons. That is the way to become poor. But to become successful, there is a need for an action to become successful. Let's get into the teaching for today. Glory be to God. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to 10. We want to read the story of four lepers who enjoyed success and we want to learn from their story. Second Kings chapter 7, from verse 1 to verse 10. Glory be to God. The Bible says, Then Elisha said, Hear in the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the world, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gates, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. But the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the horses of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents their, and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. When these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent, and carried them also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mystery will come upon us now. Will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the port of the city, and they told him, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses and asses tied, and the tenant and the tent as they were. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. I would highly encourage you to go and read this whole chapter to get the full story of these four lepers. Now, these four lepers were in a state of despondency. These four lepers were in a state of catastrophe. These four lepers were abandoned, as it were, at the entering of the gate. Because if you know, according to the Jewish customs or the customs of their time, if anyone has any form of leprosy, even the slightest symptoms of leprosy, they are cut off. From their families, they are cut off from their businesses, they are cut off from the nation, and they are put outside. They live outside. They don't live among the people. And that's because leprosy is very contagious. Okay? So, so, so these four guys were living in that state where their future, as it were, was defined by their circumstance. Their future was defined by their incapacity their future was defined, as it were, by their infirmity. But we saw something happen that took these guys from
from that point where they are to a point of success. In fact, the kind of success that no one as at that time had recorded in scriptures. And what was the difference? The difference was in a plan that they had. The difference was in planning. You see, when planning meets opportunity, success is inevitable. <clears throat> I repeat that. When planning meets opportunity, success is inevitable. When your plan meets with an opportunity, you will always succeed. And that is exactly what happened to this man. To achieve success in life, planning is primary. This is why all the teachings of this month is very important to challenge you, to stir you up, to begin to plan with God for the coming year 2025. These four lepers ask themselves a question, why sit we here until we die? When you don't plan, you are going to sit until you die. Without a plan, you are stagnated, waiting to die. Anything not planned is stagnated and will eventually be wasted. Time that hasn't been planned will be wasted. Resources, money that has not been planned will be wasted. Because life does not allow you to be neutral. You are either active or you are passive. You need to have a plan and Direct your money, your finances to where it should go, not where it wants to go. It is often said that expenditures rises to the level of income. In other words, if you earn $5 today, your problems will be less than or equal to $5. But the moment you start earning more, your kind of problems increases. The value, the responsibility gets higher, rises with the level of income. But when you have a plan, you are able to keep your expenses, your expenditures, way lower than your level of income. So why sit we here until we die? This young man asks himself this true question. <clears throat> and this is the same question I want you to ask yourself today. Why watch your life go down the drain? Why watch your life, your time, waste away? Why watch what happened to you this year negatively continue to the end of the year or even into the next year? Why sit we here until we die? What changes that question or what that question provokes is a plan to succeed. You need a plan to succeed in life. A plan is primary to succeed in life. Why? Because planning requires wisdom. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Get, therefore, get wisdom, and in all, with all thy getting, get understanding. Planning is essential, is primary for a successful life. If you don't plan your life, you have reduced your chances of success. If you don't plan your goals, you have refused to be successful. If you don't have a plan concerning God's plan for your life, you have subscribed to a life under the radar. You have subscribed to a natural life. You have all subscribed from the supernatural. You need a plan if you are to ever succeed at any endeavor. And we've talked about what a plan is. What is planning? So let me add one more definition to every other definition I've given to you this month. Planning is the arrangement of facts to meet your objectives. Planning is the arrangement of facts, relevant facts, to meet your objectives. 
Planning is the arrangement of facts to meet your goals, your objective. Anybody can wish to be great. Anybody can imagine greatness. Daydreaming is free, as far as I know now. Anybody can daydream. You can just close your eyes and imagine yourself impacting the nations, being receiving an award for excellence. Imagine yourself out of your country, being recognized globally for impacting humanity. And then you wake up and you find out that you don't even have a complete pair of shoes. Everybody can daydream. What turns a dream, a daydream, into reality is a plan that is being put to work. A plan that is being put to work. You see, when we choose leaders, if you had a chance to choose between personality and a leader with a plan, please go with the leader with a plan. Personality and charm is attractive, yes. But without a plan, your personality will do harm. Your charm will become harm. Your charm, C-H-A-R-M, will become harm, H-A-R-M. So it is important whether in, 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 in the church, in every political office, Go with a man with a plan and a man with a record of achieving his plans. I remember the very first election, probably the only election I will ever be on the ballot for. I remember that in college. And it was for the African Student Union of my college back then. And before my time, there had never been a male president. When the Holy Ghost asked me to get on that ballot, it was my first year, and I didn't know much people. But I realized that that organization was missing some solid leadership as far as structure, organization, and planning. So I put in my manifesto my plans. I opened up the eyes of the people when it was time to present that plan and open their eyes to the possibilities that we can achieve as an organization instead of spending one hour a, a week just chatting, just catching up, just checking up on each other. I opened their eyes to the potentials that we carry that we needed to explore. The power in our numbers, the power in our diversity, the power in our talents. And hallelujah, I won that election. Glory be to God. I was the underdog, but God gave me the victory. The difference is a plan that works. So don't watch your health, your life, your finances, your family, your marriage, your ministry go down the drain. <clears throat> you do something about it. Get a plan. Get a plan. Planning is the arrangement of facts to meet your objectives. Planning is acquiring the know-how and the how-to to see your defined goals come to pass. I repeat that. Planning is acquiring the know-how and the how-to to see your defined goals come to pass. One more time. Planning is acquiring the know-how and the how-tos to see your defined goals come to pass. Planning is an untransferable responsibility. I know you love your wife. I know you, your wife loves you. I know you love your husband. I know your husband loves you. I know you love your parents. Your parents love you, but they cannot plan you to success. No, you cannot be planned to success in absentia. Anybody that gives you a plan that tells you that you'll be successful without you doing anything 
is a scam. Don't believe them. Anybody that shows you a night's plan and says, hey, all you have to do is sit and watch. Run from such an individual because success does not work that way. You must take responsibility for planning your way to success. These four lepers that we talked about did not wait for hand downs. They took the bull by the horn. They took their life and destiny in their own hands. They had that mentality of, if I perish, I perish. And you know those who say, if I perish, I perish, don't end up perishing. Have Esther. Those that take a step of faith end up with the victory. Because faith is not a risk. Faith is the assurance. Faith is an assurance. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the, 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 the substance of evil and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. First John chapter 5 verse 4. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. The Bible says, This is the assurance. For whatsoever is born of God is overcoming the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So faith is not a risk. Faith is the victory. So those who say, if I perish, I perish, never perish. And that's because they have chosen the path of taking responsibility for their own success. That responsibility is untransferable. Everyone has to be engaged or involved in a plan or their plan for their own success. You have to be engaged. Even if they lay down a plan for you and say, hey, I think this is the path towards the success, there has to be something that you are responsible for to make it that happen. Therefore, it is wisdom not to be fact blind to your goals. It is accurate wisdom not to be fact blind to your goal. Be a fact hunter. Be a information hunter. Don't be a I don't know person. You have all these great ideas. You have all these great dreams. The person asks you, how do you hope to achieve this? And your answer is, I don't know. Don't be that person. Take your fact-finding process without levity so that you can level up in life. Take your fact-finding process very seriously. Make sure it's from the right source. If you are getting your information online, make, it, make sure it's from a verified and reputable source. In fact, there might be some information you may have to pay for to access. The real one is the free one, is the common one. The uncommon one you may have to pay for or subscribe to something to access that. Those that take their fact-finding process with levity never level up in life. I told my family members here, I said, if you the information you wait to get to you is already late. The information you wait for till it gets to you is already late to execute because a lot of people have gotten the same information. So let's say there is, a, there is an opportunity somewhere and you are not one of the first to get that information by going for it, by the time you see it online, it's already too late. By the time you watch a video of it, it's already too late. Many people are doing it. I remember during COVID, a lot of people had a lot of great ideas that was circulating on TikTok. And those that were early adopters were the only ones that profited. The ones that waited until the videos came out on TikTok, by then it was too late. 
they only added to the number of views of the person who posted that information. So be 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 information hungry. Be hungry to to get fresh and new information. Be a news junk junkie. Or what do they call it? Yes. Make sure that you are always in the know, especially in the things that concern your goal, your vision, God's plan for you. Get the relevant facts. You need the correct and relevant facts in any endeavor to be successful in that endeavor or in that goal. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, for example, Jesus said to his disciples, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That was a call to fact finding. Follow me, and I will start showing you the facts that will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will show you the secrets of what makes world class fishers of men. Follow me. It's an invitation. Now, it's interesting because if you go back to the original text of the theme of the month, and that Luke chapter 14, you find out that Jesus said, if you do these things, you'll be my disciple. So planning is what makes disciples. And an element of planning is fact-finding. So when Jesus called these men that were wasting away, because they were not getting the right information, the right secret, it was a call to plan. Follow me. I will show you how to become the fishers of men. This is why salvation is key to success in life. Salvation is key to success in any endeavors of life. If you are not on the Lord's side, you don't stand a chance in transgenerational success. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112. Let me show you that. Because some may say that unbelievers are rich, unbelievers are wealthy. Let me show you what true wealth is. The Bible says, Praising the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. And that greatly, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall abide in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. That is what success is all about. This one hit wonder, one generation wonder is not the kind of success that God designed for his children. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. A good man, a righteous man. So giving your hearts to Jesus is foundational because only him can make you a fisher of men. Only he can make you the best version of yourself. Following Jesus is the only guaranteed way to ensuring that you fulfill all of God's plans for your life. Hmm. When you are saved, your eyes are open to the relevant facts that contribute to your success. When you become a child of God, he begins to show you peculiar secrets that will make you become all what God has planned for you. Interestingly, these secrets are not transferable because we are not called to the same calling. These secrets are spiritual and cannot be accessed by the natural man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 24, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 2, verse 14, right? the Bible says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. This fact finding 
is foolishness to those who are not candidates of success. Particularly those who are not in the kingdom of God. So, this fact are spiritual and cannot be accessed by the natural man, and this fact cannot be transferred. They cannot be copied because it differs from one man to another. In other words, the fact you need to become a globally acclaimed lawyer or an attorney may not be the relevant fact you need to be a world-class preacher like myself. Glory be to God. So salvation is important. And before this service ends tonight, I'm going to give an opportunity to somebody under the sound of my voice who has been roaming around success without achieving it. They have been sitting outside the gates like they left the poor leprous men. Jesus is calling you in because he wants to show you how to become the best version of yourself. So get ready. I'll make that altar call very soon. Let's continue our teachings. So we talked about salvation being one of the requirements for fact-finding as part of your plans for success, as, part, as an element of planning your way to success. Fact-finding and salvation be a vital tool of fact-finding for planning your way to success. But there are other tools also, and I'm going to give you six of them. We'll take six of them very quickly, and then we'll take the altar call, and then we we'll pray. Number one, to plan your way to success, please avoid the following. Number one, or number two now, never see yourself as undeserving or incapable of achieving your goals. Never see yourself as undeserving. That vision God has planted in your heart, that plan God has revealed to you, that goal God has put ahead of you, never see yourself as undeserving or incapable of achieving your goals. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. In Numbers chapter 13, we see the story of the 12 spies that Moses sent to spy the land. Numbers chapter 13, let's read from verse 25. The Bible says they came back after 40 days from searching the land. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought word back unto them and to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, I said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and are, are very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it a man of a great statue. Verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come to the giant, which come off the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. 
God has given them the land. Ten out of the twelve spies said they couldn't take it. And that is why only Joshua and Caleb made it to the promised land. God made sure he killed those other ten people because they have seen themselves as incapable, undeserving of the assignment. And God is not looking for men and women who feel they are undeserving. Can I, can I tell you something? That feeling of un being undeserving is not humility. It is a weapon of defeat of the devil. That feeling of undeserving or incapable incapability to meet your goals, to achieve your purpose, to achieve the vision God has given to you, is not humility. You are not being humbled by singing songs that make you feel, I'm incapable, Lord, I'm incapable, Lord, I cannot do it. No! Yeah, I sound like Paul said, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil tell you that you are a leper and that you are outside the gate. I can run to a tree and leap over walls by my God. And do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So never see yourself as undeserving or incapable of achieving your goals. When God has put it in your heart, Everything that you need to achieve that goal, God will put it in your hands. You just have to take steps. You see, there are some doors here in this part of the world, and I believe in most part of the world, that don't open until you come close to it. Think about that. You know those doors that have sensors on them? Those doors will not open if you are too far from it. But the moment you move close, you take a step, you take a leap, then they open. Some even open according to how fast you run towards it, according to your speed towards it. If you are walking slowly, they open slowly. But if you are running, they open faster. That is how success and planning a life is when you are full throttle opportunities will keep coming but if you sit in one spot there is no guaranteed success so never see yourself as undeserving and capable of achieving your goals number three stop blaming others for your present conditions or incapabilities don't pass the buck Stop blaming others. Stop attributing where you are now in life to what someone has done or what someone has not done. Take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility so you don't die in liability. God's servant, my father and the Lord, Bishop David Oedipo, will always tell us that in college. I started hearing about that at the age of 15, 16. He said, take responsibility. I'm sorry, at about 19, I think it was when I was in, what? I think between 16 and 19, I don't remember when now. But I started getting that as a teenager to take responsibility for my life. Your background is not the reason why your back to be on the ground. You must take responsibility. You must plan your way to success. Don't Blame anyone for your present condition or your incapabilities. Worse still, don't blame the government. Don't blame who is in power. Don't blame your boss. Take responsibility. Some people are always looking for who to blame. If they bump their foot on the, on, on the, on the, on the object on the floor, they say it's the government's fault. What, what's the correlation between you bumping your foot on an object and the government? I mean, come on. 
Excuses, excuses, excuses. Take responsibility. Number four, see your goals. Uh, I mean, see the mountains between you and your goals as a mountain to climb over or walk through rather than a mountain to stand behind. In other words, see every adversity as an opportunity and not as an obstacle. See every adversity in, in line of your pursuit. As you're planning, challenges will come up, issues will come up. Don't give up at that point. See that as an opportunity and not as an obstacle. Don't close the books. Don't throw in the towel. When you are planning and you are executing your plan, sometimes things may not go as planned. Embrace those moments. See them as an opportunity. See them as a learning opportunity. See them as a resting opportunity. See them as an opportunity to re-strategize. Rather than getting stuck behind those mountains. What you call your mountains is what they will be. If you call those obstacles, if you call those challenges obstacles, they will remain an obstacle. But if you call them an opportunity, you will pass over them. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, the Lord God made all the animals come before Adam for him to name them. And whatever Adam called the animal, that was its name thereof. So whatever you call that challenge is what it will end up becoming. You call it an opportunity, it will become an opportunity. If you call it an obstacle, it will remain an obstacle. Number five, don't entertain the discouragement of non-planners. There are two or three kinds of people in this world. <laughs> there are the planners, there are the non-planners, and there are the people who act on what others plan for them. Don't entertain the discouragement of non-planners. Anyone who doesn't plan in life is an automatic failure because those who fail to plan have planned to fail. What is your plan for the next two years? What is your plan for the next three years? What is your plan for tomorrow? Those who fail to plan have planned to fail. So the non-planners think that the planners are belaboring themselves for nothing. But the time spent planning actually saves you time and years of frustration. So there is a tendency that people around you who may not be planners may discourage you. They may call your planning analysis paralysis. But don't be discouraged by their plans. Don't let their non-planning capacity or ability influence yours. You go ahead and plan your life. You go ahead and focus on your plan. Plan your way to success. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, the Bible says that we should not allow evil communication to affect us. The Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Planning is good manners. Don't entertain the discouragement of non-planners. Every organization who's doing well have a plan. They have a strategic goal. They have a strategic vision. They have strategic actions towards their goals. Don't let non-planners. And there will be non-planners. They, they, they are everywhere. People who don't have a plan, you know, some people just get on the job and they have no plan for being on the job. 
I remember telling some folks I was working with, I said, it's impossible for me to spend 30 years on this job without becoming the CEO. It's not possible. I give a man to a company 30 years of my life and I end up with one kind of title or the same title? No. That's not my plan. That's not God's plan for me either. So don't just take that job without a plan. What, 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 what is your plan? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number six. Never call the resources in your hand as not enough to reach your goals. When you are in the state of planning, plan with what you have. Because what you have is more than enough. As you walk in line with your plan, the resources will come your way. Because God is not a waster. God will not send resources to a waster or somebody without a plan. You can daydream all you want to be financially blessed, to be financially rich, to be financially wealthy, but God does not honor wishes. God honors hard work. God honors a plan. That's why they say if wishes were horses, even beggars will ride. God will not send money to those who are daydreaming about it. God will only send money to those who have a plan for it. So when you want to start a project, don't think about money. Get a plan. Start working on your plans. During the course of this teaching, one of our brothers will be teaching us on short-term versus long-term goals, and they'll be telling us how to execute our plans. But what you have in your hand is enough. Jesus said, God said in Numbers 14, 28, only as I live, as they have said in my ears, so will I do. Jesus said in Matthew 21, 21, you shall have whatever you, you say. And in Mark 11, 23, you shall have whatsoever you say. So don't call that resource. Don't call that money. Don't call that time. Don't call that energy. Don't call that resource in your hand as not enough. Don't call the number of people in your ministry as not enough. Because if you call it as not enough, they will remain not enough. So the resources in your hand is what God can entrust you with now. When you work on your plan and you demonstrate capacity to handle more resources, you will send them your way. Because God is not a waste. Finally, number seven. Never lose the value for time. Never lose the value for time. Have, always have an appreciation for time. Before cell phones became popular, when I was in college, I had a professor that told me, that told our class, not just me personally, but he told the entire class something. He said to us that he never respects anybody that doesn't wear a watch. I thought that was an arrogant statement because I couldn't afford a watch. Oh, I, 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 I didn't think about, I mean, there are watches of different kinds. What he said to us, that he did, he never respect anyone who doesn't have a watch. A wristwatch, a wristwatch is what it meant. Because to him, that person does not value time. I mean, thank God for cell phones now that have a clock on it and, can tell what time it is. But this was back in the day when cell phones were not called common. And in my college then, they didn't allow us even to use cell phones. So we all had to go and get a watch. <laughs> but my point is, the value for time. You see, time is a universal currency for success. Time is a universal currency for success. Time is a universal currency for planning too. Everyone has 
equal time to plan their way to success. Every one of us have 24 hours each. No matter how long you've been on this earth, no matter how experienced you are, you don't have more than anybody else on the earth the number of hours in a day. Everybody gets the same 24. So it's a universal currency, whether in Bangladesh or in Ubudagu, whether in Paris or San Antonio, whether in Okokomaiko or in Chicago. Time is a universal currency. Everybody has the same 24 hours. So you must make sure you man maximize your time. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16, as we close tonight, the Bible says that we should redeem the time because the days are evil. Don't lose value for time. Don't lose value for time. I said to us, I believe last week Sunday, that for several years now, I make sure that there is no day I go to bed without doing something that is on my to-do list. To the glory of God, there has been no day where I have not done anything, by the grace of God, there are such days will not arise in the name of Jesus Christ. In summary tonight, God wants you to plan with him for the coming year 2025. God has a plan of success for you, and you can plan your way into that success in the year 2025. Take a cue from the four lepers we just read about in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to 10. Take a cue from them. Go and study them. There were several things that was working against them, but they had a plan. Their plan was, let us go inside. Let us go inside. And they went in the twilight. So it wasn't just random. They didn't just go at a random time. They had a plan. And as God will honor it, it was at the same twilight that the inhabitants of that land heard the noise. I need your Bible. I ask you to read the whole chapter. In fact, I, I want you to study it. So there must have been a reasoning behind them planning to go in the twilight. That's how those young men came out of, those lepers came out of poverty. They went I like what they did. <laughs> to tell you that leprosy does not mean you should be stupid. They had a deformity, but not a deformity of the mind. They went and carried some and went and hid it. They went the second time, carried more and hid it. So nobody will ever know what they have. So they will also be enjoying what the people in the gates are enjoying. Plan well, life will be easy for you. Mm -hmm. When you separate yourself from people who don't have a plan, God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, would always say this. He said he prayed the prayer when he was young. What was the prayer? He said, Lord, take me away from the camp of people going nowhere. Remove me from the camp of people going backwards and connect me to the camp of people going towards my destiny. Can we say that prayer tonight? Can we say that prayer tonight? Lord, remove me from the camp of those going nowhere. Remove me from the camp of those going backwards. And connect me to the camp of those going forward. Lift up your voice to heaven and begin to pray that prayer. Manasonda le pranash kele karoto sande li Father, remove me from the camp of those going nowhere. Remove me from the camp of those going backwards. And connect me to the camp of those going forward towards my destiny. Remove me from the camp of those going nowhere. Those who don't know where they are going. Ayima sundali paratano. Rekoto sindale kedeva shandala polu atalia. Remove my name. Remove my life. Remove my path. Remove my connections. Remove my interest from the camp of those who are going backwards. And connect me to people who are going forward towards my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will remove you from the camp of those going nowhere. The Lord will remove your name from the camp of those going backward in life. And God will connect you to the camp of those going forward towards your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Lift up your hands and let's give God praise for tonight. Let's appreciate him. Let's celebrate him. Thank you, faithful Father. And blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we close the service tonight, I did mention and promise that I will keep some of our friends who are watching us for the first time or who are watching us again and are yet to be saved. I'm going to give them an opportunity to give their hearts to Jesus. And I'm, an, I'm pleased to announce to you that now is the moment. This is the act. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. For you to come to Jesus. The one who can make you. Who can show you. The how to. Become the best version of yourself. The one who can show you. How to become all what God has destined you to be. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man commit unto the Father except by me. Jesus is the way. And Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. He's the true way. And he's the life-giving way. Tonight, or whatever time it is in your area, if you've heard this voice of God through me, and you want to say yes to Jesus, Maybe you are doing this for the first time. It doesn't matter. Maybe you are doing it another time. It doesn't matter. I always tell <laughs> the people in the sanctuary, anytime I preach, I said, don't think because we know you, then you, you will be ashamed to give your heart to Jesus. The real shame will come when we are all transfigured, the righteous, when rapture happens and you are left behind. That's where the real shame is. So even if everybody knows you now, or whatever you are, people think you are saved, but you know in your heart that if Jesus comes today, you are not going on with him. Please, forget their shame. That one is nothing. You don't want to face the real shame. Please bow your head. Close your eyes. And say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today just the way I am. I am a sinner. And I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me with your blood and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved, I'm born again, I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Please keep your eyes closed and your head bowed as I pray by you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones who have come to you today. I pray that you will receive them into your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you forgive their sins and make them your child again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon them and I disconnect them from their old lifestyle. Never to return there again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. And I pray, O oh God, that the same grace that gave them boldness to come before you today, let that same boldness abide with them forever. And on the last day, when you come to take us all home, my Father, may all our garments be white as snow. May no iniquity be found in any one of us. May we remain ready and have trouble with you into eternity. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise God. If you said that prayer, congratulations. You are now saved. You are now born again and you are now a child of God. And I'd like to hear from you. So please send us a message on any of our social media platforms. <coughs> Letting us know that you made that informed decision to follow Jesus. And we will reach out to you 
will take you through a discipleship class that will further strengthen your work with God and your resolve to serve Jesus. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can send us a message on any of our social media platforms or you can send an email to newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. The Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's lift up our hands one more time and say thank you to Jesus for sending his word, for the impact of his word in our lives, for the testimonies that are going to come forth from this message, from this service today. Father, we give you all the praise. We honor you. We adore you. And we celebrate you. You are a faithful God. You are a good, good father. And so we say thank you. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just a quick reminder, please don't forget on Saturday we're meeting twice. We're meeting in the morning for our weekend family breakfast prayer. It's a time of intercessory planning, intercessory prayers. Right? Sorry, I've been thinking about planning a lot. Intercessory prayers for our families, for our marriages, for our relatives, for our relationships, and for all our loved ones. You see, it is a good plan to start to pray about your future your future spouse, your future children, your future family, even as a single. Don't miss this great plan. It's going to bless your life. So join us this Saturday at 8 a.m. for a time of prayer. It's going to be online. And again, the time is 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Also, that same Saturday, we're going to be meeting in the evening for a time of worship, worship him in the evening. And the time is 6.30, 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That service is going to be in the sanctuary, and Jesus will be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Father, once again, thank you for tonight. We give you all the praise and glory. Thank you for your word that you sent. Thank you for your people that you brought. Thank you for the utterance, for the anointing, to deliver your heart. To us, your people. Blessed be your name of God. Thank you for bringing every decree to pass. And thank you for the testimonies of changed lives and released destinies. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Every service this week and this month and this year, they are blessed. Every preacher is anointed with fresh fire, deeper revelation, and the presence of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Who are you? I am more than a conqueror. One more time. Who are you? I am more than a conqueror. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. My name again is Pastor Deere. And I'm the lead pastor here at Tola, the House of Light Assembly here in Akron, Ohio, where God is changing lives and releasing destinies. God bless you. I'll see you on Saturday for the weekend family breakfast prayer and the worship them in the evening in Jesus' name. Remember this, no matter the situations you're going through, no matter the circumstances, don't you ever forget these three things. Number one, that God loves you. Number two, that Jesus is Lord, and number three, that Jesus Christ is coming soon, he's coming back again, he's coming back very soon to take us all home with him. So rejoice and be prepared. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for listening to today's message. We know you have been blessed. So for more of these messages, please visit us on our website at www.thola.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel at THOLA TV. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at THOLA underscore church. God bless you and keep on shining. Changing